Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of First Impressions on the Scratch Track Podcast presented by the Dune Grim Show and co-produced by Mr. Ivy EST. I'm the dude. And I am Grim. And today we are going to give our first impression, our, according to dude, initial, initial first impression of Blur, the Ballad of Darren. Just yes. released on Friday, the 21st of July. It's a newbie. In the it's year fresh, of Lord, hot off the presses. 23. Exactly. This is the band's ninth studio album. The first since 2015. Uh, so it has been a while, but it was even like longer before that. Yeah. Uh, and I, so. I think that's something to talk about because before this happened, they there was a hiatus. And even before that, I believe they recorded an album, but Graham Coxon was not a part of it. The guitarist. Believe, and so I believe that is correct. So in a way you can't really call this like sort of their reunion or like comeback album, because I would argue that that is the magic whip. Absolutely. And I have to say shame on me for not listening to that when it came out, because I have been aware of it for a long time and I don't know what prevented me from listening to it thus like this long. But after I listened to the ballad, Darren, I read about it and I wanted to listen to that one too, because you know, like they're in their same form, which is, which is really awesome. I think at, at this point to see a band with the core members. Absolutely. Especially after so long, they've been together for a very, very, very long time. Uh, And And even to have that break and then come back like that's, that's cool. So I, I feel like both of these albums count. And I think that, sure. granted, this is about our first impression of the Battle of Darren. Mm-hmm. But in a way, for me, it's almost like a first impression of the Magic Whip, too. Uh, to my own it's, discredit, it's because it took me, oh, I don't know, eight years to listen to it. Yeah. Which is kind of exactly. ridiculous. And, and not yeah. okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, after putting on the, the Ballad of Darren... Um, you know, I was excited about it, excited that it was coming out. We we revisited the self-titled Blur album, and we have an episode on that coming out very shortly, um, like, probably within the next few days, uh, as long as we get our shit together. Um, but, you know, so I was excited to, to listen to this one and see, like, you know, after so long, like, where, where they were at. And I think maybe, um, I'm, I don't know if my expectations were too high, um, but... After a first listen, I I wasn't exactly blown away by it. It's it's very subdued, very chill. Nothing really stood out to me. There weren't like a lot of real hooks um, I felt on any of the tracks. And if I had to categorize it, I'd really just kind of call it soft rock. I mean, I just wasn't I wasn't blown away by it. And that's fair. You know, one you know one thing Damon Alburn said was that when he was talking about this album was like, it's kind of like, you know, an aftershock. It's a reflection and a, a comment on where they are now. And I think I said to you, I was like, are they just tired and old or what? Like what's going on here? Because maybe that's what they were going for and that's what they wanted. Or they just wanted something very just chill. I, I just, I was expecting something just a little more dynamic. I yeah, should say. I guess that's fair. I, I had somewhat similar expectations, but I guess as I listen to it, I I think about it and having having done, having talked about the 96 album, you can't expect the same so. sort of output out of guys that are now in their 50s. Um, it, it's just and I know that we drew the comparison to like Queens of the Stone Age because they put out right. an album this year. And they've always had more edge than blur, but the edge is just sort of a reflection of age now. And I feel like the blur album is too. And even some of the band members commented on that. It just, it sort of had to do like with age and where they were at, but I agree, you know, I, I hoped for maybe some different things, but I also, I also kind of got it, and I know that we talked offline a little bit, and you had compared it kind of like to Beck's Sea Change. 
Yeah. And and I think that's fair because you get to a point in your life and you're like, I, I don't want to write pop songs anymore. Um, sure. I, that's just not where I'm at. But for. Yeah. But I, I have to say, like, with all that said, for what they were trying to do, I think they did it absolutely wonderfully. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the sound of it is 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 good. The production's good. I mean, obviously, all that you would expect mm-hmm. that. Um, and I, I guess, sure, if you know, I, I think I'm okay with this album being what it is, comparing it sort of to Beck, as long as we get sort of a um, you know a, a, a Guero and a mutation or a, a midnight you yeah, know whatever yeah, yeah. Right? mutations and stuff. Like, but I think I, the, I just, the magic whip was kind of that, and we missed it. To be fair. Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean, it was, that was it a, was excellent. I, that was a I big really, miss by me. And I'm, I'm like yeah. ashamed to even say that because uh, I feel like I try to listen to new music and I saw that out and I love the cover. I mean, it's like a neon sign of an sweet. ice cream cone. Yeah, it just has is. a cool yeah. look to it. And then knowing mm-hmm. that like they conceived the album over hanging out like in Hong Kong for five days or something. I'm like, that's that's also pretty awesome, dude. Yeah. And and the thing is, is I feel like so I feel like I had my my opinion of the Ballad of Darren already pretty much formed. But then I went back and listened to the Magic Whip and then listening to the Ballad of Darren again. And that almost brought me down like another notch, I think. Oh, really? To me, I felt like it made more sense. Like, yeah. I, I, I almost felt like I, I got the progression a little more because it was like they had this moment where they reformed and they had this sort of massive influences. And some of it was akin to what they had done before and some of it was different. Sure. But then with yeah. this one, I felt like I felt like they were devoid of expectation and therefore, sure. because if, if you feel that, I think it allows you a freedom to do whatever it is you want to do at that moment. And I guess I felt like that's kind of what they yeah. did. But I get I get why a lot of people will say exactly what you said. And I'm sure a lot of people will just shit all over it. I mean, well, yeah. And, and that's what I'm curious about. I'm, I'm very curious to see what the sort of what we would call the super fans sort of think. Is this sort of the progression you were kind of hoping they would make something maybe more a quieter chill maybe deeper more personal grown up album yeah. right or, or and, did and maybe you want that's the what, same thing yeah Dude, yeah Martell's maybe that's what people Hello. people were thinking yeah um 9:54 p.m. Siri's telling me something yeah well i mean it is 9:54 <laughs> um, I, I think, p.m. <laughs> yeah i was just i i, I yeah I, I think I was just hoping for something even a little more dynamic, like even listening to his vocals throughout this whole album, they stay pretty consistent and sound pretty much the same song to song. I will say the one song that that I think is just awesome. It's badass. It was the second single off this album, and that is St. Charles Square. It is the second track on the album. Man, I I, that song is badass. I really, really really like it. I really liked Russian Strings, too. That was one that okay. stuck with me, and I can't, I can't remember the name of the song, but they had one, and I would venture to say it's on the back half of the album, where like mm. there is a nice Wurlitzer track. That's yes. just did you uh, hear that? It's real punchy, and yep. um, yeah, yeah. I believe. Mm. Oh shoot, I had it. I had it written down. Um, is that goodbye, one. Albert? I th- no, I think it's Far Away Island. Oh, okay. I think it's Far Away. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Far well, Away. Whatever Island, one. That, I mean, that, the, that, the Wurlitzer caught my ear. Oh too, yeah, right? and I'm I'm yeah. glad that I've I've messed you up enough that you could even hear that and be like, that's probably a Wurlitzer as opposed to a Rhodes. But like, that's just who I am. Like, oh yeah, I don't know. I, I think in my notes I put it down as like a Hammond, but I knew it was God. one of those three. So <laughs> oh damn it, I recant everything I just said. Yeah. Throw that out the window and, dude, yeah. burn after reading straight up. Yeah. It sounds really good though. Um, it does. But so it's a world. So do you, I mean, I mean, here's the deal. I, I would, you know, I'd recommend everyone give this album a listen. And yeah, if you, you are, 
And if you have not listened to um, the Magic Whip, definitely go back and listen to that. Because oh, that yeah. is, dude, that is that is some legit shit right there. Um, you know, and 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 I do see the progression. I, I would be curious as to, you know, I mean, I like sort of. And again, we compared it to Beck a little bit. I like Sea Change sort of in the middle of his catalog like that. And even I think it was his album Colors, which won album of the year or something like that, um, was very similar to Sea Change. Very just down and acoustic and and whatnot. Well, here's my question to you. Mm. What if this is at the end of Blur's catalog? It it definitely could be. I mean, is this their swan song? I know. And even if it is, like... Morning phase. I I think... I think that's okay. Um... But yeah, it's it's interesting because, you know, you can talk about all these other things in retrospect, but you don't know where this one's going to sit. And I think that's sort of the interesting part about it is, do you like it for what it is? And I I think it's unfair to just um, for for people to be like, oh, this is just old guys making sad dad music or some shit like that. I, I honestly don't think that's fair because the reality of it is even is, they are old guys and they're oh, that, making, yeah and they're sure no. that that is the reality of it but the other bit is you can't just recycle the same shit you always did sure you you have yeah. to do something that is a change for you um, and I'm sure a lot of people would label it good and a lot bad but I mean. You can't just recycle the same shit over and over. It's yeah. it's not going to there. There's yeah. there's nothing to really like look back on long term at that point and be like, oh, man, that was an amazing spot. Because think it, we've talked about it in the podcast so much. Some of the best albums ever were where a band had this really like sharp turn. Yep. Yep. Well, I mean, just like their self-titled album was kind of considered a, yeah, a sort of sure. sharp, sharp turn for them. It was just um, a different sharp turn. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and but another they were thing we've talked younger about, in 96, I don't know, like <laughs> 30 years ago. Yeah. Well, another thing we've talked about, too, with with a lot of bands is, you know, as bands do get older, as we get older. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of times one thing people it's a common thing. People say, oh, they just don't make it like they used to. Right. Like like I like their old stuff. And man, that can be true. And that can be, you know, for a lot of bands that, you know, that does happen. I know I'm guilty of that with Team and Paul you know, so much. Dude, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, dude, think about like. Like, what's your favorite Stones album after um, Tattoo You? What the fuck is that shit? Um, I'm going to use my constitutional amendment right now and yeah. plead the fifth See, because I don't I'm, have one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like there there are certain bands that, you know, I I, I just. No, that's you're, you're absolutely the, right. And that's totally fair. I mean, there's there's a point where it's just exhausted. And it's funny because. The Stones actually came up in this uh, interview that I read from Damon Albarn, and he he mentioned that he said the Stones made some of like the greatest albums that there were, but at some point you just kind of either got to do something different, or or what are you going to still go on tour when you're eighty? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that's that's kind of what they're doing. They're, they do it, and they're playing Brown Sugar, and he's running around, and it's you know, I'm sh- and the tickets are expensive. I'm sure it's a great know, show, but I know, but but but, but is a they have not progressed. You no, know, at a certain no. at a certain point, they just kind of stop progressing, and that's in in and, um, and that's fine. I mean, it would. It's also funny in the same interview. I just I want to bring this up quick, even though it's kind of an aside. Mm-hmm. Um, it talked about the Beatles, and he said. The reason why the Beatles are still what the Beatles are today is because they never got old and they never made the shitty album. And they, yeah. and dude, think yeah. about it. Like that, that's kind of it, you know, the, and, and, and that's, that's, I think the interesting thing as a band is like, when do you decide when you were like, okay, let's leave it where it is because this is going to be the shitty album. Like, how do you it's make thing, that call? Yeah. 
Well, it, it goes beyond movies too, or oh, music too. That's yeah, why yeah. that's why Quentin Tarantino is like, yeah, I'm Quentin. I'm gonna finish. I'm Quentin. I'm Quentin at ten. You know what I mean? Because he's like, he doesn't want to become sort of like, he doesn't want to make a shit movie. He doesn't want to make kind of like one of those movies that, you know, is some directors and people get older. Yeah, you know, it's like, it's, it, you know, oh, it's a classic because it's this guy did it. But you're like, yeah, is it really? it's not. Yeah. It's just not. Is it really? It's not that. It doesn't have the same punch. It doesn't have the same balls. Yeah. Right? It doesn't, it doesn't have totally that. totally get and it. Some things. You know, your cheeks have lost their luster, right? Dude, so. way to quote Pavement, dude. Right on. There you go. I think yeah, with that, exactly. tell we us what to. you think about this album. Yes. We're just going to go on in tangents forever. Like and subscribe. Comment below. And yeah. I, I'd i really like to know what the fans think of of this album. Yeah, I, I think they're going to be split down the middle. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I really think they are. So... All right. Thank you for watching, everyone. We got an episode coming out very soon about Blur's self-titled album. It's a Blur where week. We, it's a Blur week. Blur, it's a blur of a week. Yeah. It's a Blur. Yes. So Time to go. Until next time, time to go. The Dude in the Grim Show. Scratch Your Track is produced by The Dude in the Grim. Additional music provided by Moore and the Tings. Copyright 2023. The Dude in the Grim Show.